Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about dynamical systems. And in the last lecture, we talked about continuous time dynamical systems, x dot equals f of x. And I want to be explicit that this uh, state x depends on t, so the time derivative of x equals some function of x. Uh, this is just how we write down differential equations uh, where some state vector x evolves in time. This could be the populations of a predator and a prey species and they, as they evolve in time uh, or anything else. Okay, so very, very general ordinary differential equation framework or dynamical systems framework. This is called a continuous time system. And what I want to talk about today is how we can get discrete time dynamical systems from these. Okay, so discrete time dynamical systems. And when I write this x, I'm going to assume that this is possibly a vector of states. And so this f would have be a vector valued function with as many outputs as there are elements of x. And so for every continuous differential equation, you can define a discrete time uh, differential equation or dynamical system corresponding to this. So what we're going to say is x at k plus 1 equals big F at x at time k. So usually I think of the, the index k as the time step of an integrator. So I'm stepping my system forward in time from time k to time k plus 1. But in reality, this could be much more general. This doesn't have to be time. Um, discrete time dynamical systems are more general than continuous time systems. Okay, and what I could do is I could define, uh, I could define x at time k to be this continuous x at time k delta t. So again, I could be taking delta t time steps. Maybe I have a real continuous physical system like a population, but I sample it every day. And so my delta t might be one day sampling and k would be, you know, k equals one would be day one, k two would be day two, day three, and so on and so forth. So what I could do is I could sample my continuous time system. And then I could essentially write my, my big F in terms of this continuous time differential equation. I could basically say, um, how do I want to define this? I could basically say x at time k plus 1 is equal to x at time k plus the integral from uh, k delta t to k plus 1 delta t of uh, f of x of, let's call this tau, x of tau d tau. So essentially what I can do is I can integrate my trajectory through this dynamical system for one delta t, uh, and, and that will give me my next time step, x at k plus 1. So oftentimes we call this the flow map, the flow map. So this flows uh, my state from one time into the future according to this differential equation, and that's called the flow map f this is my little delta t flow map. Okay, so f delta t, big F delta t is, is a flow map through delta t of this, and it steps me delta t forward. Okay, and notice I have to write it as an integral. So basically, I start at xk, and then what, this is my initial condition, and then essentially I am integrating this right hand side continuously, but as I integrate this right hand side continuously, my state x is moving along with the dynamics. So I have to keep track of where my state moves along this trajectory. So that's why I have this x of tau inside of here because as the state is moving, my vector field has to be evaluated at that new location throughout this trajectory. Okay? So I can always go from continuous time to discrete time. This is um, really important. You can always go this way. But you can only sometimes come back. So discrete time dynamical systems are much more general. There's more discrete time dynamical systems than there are continuous time. Every single continuous time dynamical system can be written in discrete time using this flow map. But there are lots of discrete time dynamical systems where there is no continuous time analog, where they're not integrating some continuous time uh, process. 
So one example could be um, in real population dynamics, there are these discrete events and seasons and things like that. So it's hard to model um, you know, population dynamics as a continuous time si system if there really are um, these kind of discrete events that, that happen, like you know, there's spring and there's winter and things like that. Okay. Um, one way that you can picture what this, uh, what this flow map is doing is we can try to just look at what a, uh, a forward Euler integrator would look like. Okay, so instead of writing x dot, let's say x at time k plus 1 minus x at time k divided by delta t equals f of x, and let's say it's f of x at time k. Okay, I'm going to do a super simple approximation. This is approximately equal. Let's say approximately. Okay. XK minus one, XK plus one minus XK divided by delta T. This is a finite difference approximation of this derivative here. Is approximately equal to F evaluated at XK. And now I can multiply everything over and I get XK plus one equals XK plus delta T times F of XK. So notice this actually looks a lot like this expression here where I've done the crudest um, kind of left rectangle approximation of this integral over that delta t. So instead of integrating over delta t this f function, I'm literally just taking that f, holding it constant and multiplying it by delta t. So if my function f looked like that, you know, from uh, k to k plus 1, this is f, then what this forward Euler integrator is doing is it's just holding it constant for that entire delta t, and it's computing this integral area just using the area of this rectangle. So that's what this is here, is kind of a crummy left rectangle approximation of this true flow map. So there is a true flow map, and forward Euler, this is a forward Euler integrator, uh, is basically just doing an approximation of that, of that flow map. Okay, so this is kind of the crudest, simplest thing you would code up if you wanted to simulate a dynamical system is you'd basically just make this approximation for the derivative, you'd multiply by delta t, add xk, and now you have an integrator, okay? And this is crudely approximating this flow map. There are lots and lots of discrete time systems that you could induce from this continuous time. I could write down the uh, Runge-Kutta integrator family, and each of those is another discrete time flow map that's approximating this true continuous integral flow map. In most systems of interest, you can't actually compute this integral in closed form. So really only a very small handful of dynamical systems can you actually write down the annex analytic solution to this. Uh, for linear systems you can do it, this will be e to the a t, um, where a is the, the linear matrix a times x. But really, in general, for nonlinear dynamical systems, this flow map is hard to compute. Okay, and you have to approximate it numerically with, with schemes like this. But in general, I think one of the points I want to make is that these discrete time systems are more general. Okay, so this is more uh, general. And even very, very simple systems can give rise to chaos. Okay. So one system in the next video, we're going to simulate the uh, logistic map. So let me just write it up here. We're going to simulate up the logistic map. And this is actually another model for population uh, growth and saturation. So it's got um, these kind of different fixed points corresponding to zero population or full population. And as we dial up one of the parameters, we're going to find that this actually goes chaotic. Okay, so the dynamical system I believe is uh, xk plus 1 equals uh, beta xk, beta times xk, times 1 minus xk, okay? And so this is a simple nonlinear map that is um, xk minus xk squared times a beta parameter. And as this beta increases, the system is going to become more and more and more chaotic. Okay, so we're going to simulate this in MATLAB uh, and plot some really cool pictures that you've probably seen before. Okay, thank you.